ain't never visited that way. Amen. We're going to begin reading at Acts 2. If you have it, say praise the Lord. Lord. New King James Version. When the day of Pentecost had fully or completely come, they were all with one accord. Shout, that's a miracle. miracle. I don't care what kind of group you got. If everybody's on one accord, sorority, fraternity, church, everybody on one, that's a miracle right there. Amen. Amen. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, shout suddenly, Suddenly. there came a sound from heaven. It it didn't just show up. It came from somewhere. (laughs) Amen. It came from heaven. Amen. Amen. As of a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Amen. Listen, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then, after all that commotion, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, shall fire, Fire. and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the word of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and shout, neighbor. The power of Pentecost. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, the power of Pentecost. Bend your hearts to God. Father, we love you. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, your bountiful blessings. Thank you for this opportunity and privilege to assemble ourselves together one more time. Thank you for what our eyes will see, our ears will hear, and our hearts will feel. We bless your name, God, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. Speak now in the mighty name of Jesus, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God, and amen. As you take your seats, put your hands together. Before we begin, let me highlight that tomorrow is Memorial Day. If we have any veterans, would you please stand or raise your hand? Anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and your service, your contribution. Amen. The power of Pentecost. It is clear to us that our manual or our instructions come from the Bible, the Holy Bible, comprised of two testaments, the old and the new. We understand about the 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 history of what's in the old contained is in the new explained. Amen. And the way that God's people would celebrate their relationship with him in the Old Testament was by feasts. Amen? They called them holy days or high days. Amen? We, 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 we hear about the big one, the Day of Atonement. Everybody talk about the Day of Atonement. Amen? Where they atone, amen, or become at one with God for everything that they did. Amen? For Christ had not come, amen, as the propitiation or sacrifice for us. Therefore, there had to be an avenue, amen, or a conduit to keep us connected to God. Therefore, the high priest would enter into the holies of holies one day a year. Just that one day, amen. And when he would enter in, he wore significant clothing, amen, and then he had an apparatus with him to let you know how holy our God is. They tied a rope around his waist and put bells, amen, on his rope, around his ankles, amen? Because if they heard the bells stop, they knew he dropped dead. And someone would dare not go in behind him, so the rope was tied to him to pull him out, amen? Because God did not find him worthy. 
But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish or have to wait till the day of atonement but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands and say, I got that life. The, the, the feast of first fruits, amen, it was celebrated, amen, it was celebrated, it was, it was big. That was the last name given to the Pentecost, the first fruits, amen, and, and, and to Pentecost, amen. But how did it come about? Well, first, they had Passover. We know about Passover, amen. We'll have to take time and digress back to Exodus. Somebody say, I've been to Sunday school. Been to Sunday school. Amen, amen. But, 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 but what happened was there, there was Passover, amen, and then at the conclusion of Passover, they were to count seven weeks, which would be seven times seven, would be 49 days, and then on the next day would be the 50th day, amen, amen, and 50 days afterwards will be called Pentecost, amen, 50 in the Greek is Pentecost, amen, the day of Pentecost. In the New Testament, say New Testament. Yes. After the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, we understand that for 40 days he showed himself with many infallible proofs, amen? And after those 40 days with the many infallible proofs, this is what he said. He says, I want my disciples to go to Jerusalem, listen to this, and wait for the promise of the Father. Amen? I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. Amen? And then, you know, we, 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 he said, for John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Amen? And then it is clear to us that after those 40 days, the Bible says, what is it? that he that descended, ascended first. Amen? So he went up, amen, and what he did is 10 days later, amen, we find the 50th day, the day of Pentecost. Amen? The day of Pentecost is the birthday of the church. Somebody say, I like birthdays. Sister Sandy just had a birthday. Amen? Amen? Amen. The birthday of the church, amen? But for our understanding, it needs to be clear, when we hear the birthday of the church, we're not talking about the Catholic church. We're not talking about the Lutheran church. We're not talking about the Methodist church. We're not talking about the Baptist church or the Pentecostal church, amen? We're talking about the church of the living God because the church is not a denomination, amen? The church is not a denomination. That's man-made, amen? But the church is an organism, amen? The church is alive. The church is living. Can I share something with you? The church is the only legal authority upon earth, amen? The only, not, not the president, not the Republicans, not the Democrats, amen, not Congress. The only legal authority upon earth is the church, amen? As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. Amen? The church is not a denomination, even though we define it by denominations. Amen? But the church is identified by its foundation. Amen? In the gospel according to Matthew 16, Jesus made a statement. Amen? Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen? Upon this rock, I will build my church. Amen? This statement comes off of the question of him asking his disciples, amen, who do men say that I am? Some said that thou art Elias. Amen? Some say thou art John the Baptist. And some say one of the prophets. Amen? And, and, and even though we don't interpret it that way, those were insults. Think about it. They are talking to Jesus. Amen? And he says, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say that you're like Elijah. 
and we know he's a great prophet. Some say we know you like John the Baptist, and we know he's the forerunner. Amen? And, 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 and he said, or like one of the other prophets. The problem is we're talking about Jesus. Amen? When you, when, when, when you identify him as Elijah or John or one of the prophets, you do not honor his deity. See, that's what happens today, amen? Certain communities refer to Jesus without his deity. They call him a prophet. They call him a teacher. Are you listening to me? But we know him as the Messiah, the son of the living God. Put your hands together and say, I know who Jesus is. They, 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 they were saying these things and then knife carrying Peter. Are you listening to me? Walking on water, Peter. Cussing Peter. Denying Jesus, Peter. He says, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And then he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then the question becomes, who is the rock? Because Peter got the revelation of who Jesus Christ was. Many say that Peter is the rock. Amen. But the text says that Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. My brothers and sisters, the foundation of the church is Jesus. Amen. Everything starts with Jesus. Amen. It doesn't start with the pastor. It doesn't start with the bishop. It doesn't start with the apostle. It doesn't start with the singer. Everything starts with Jesus. Amen. I am an under shepherd. Amen. We all work for the Lord. Amen. That's why we don't lord over God's heritage. Amen. It all starts with him. This is his church. He died for the church, and that's not this building, but it's those of us that are in this building. Amen. It's those that are viewing us in this building. Amen. The church is the baptized body of called believers. Amen. We make up the church. Amen. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You ought to shout, I'm bad. Because he is saying, no matter whatever you go through, it shall not prevail. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Our God is so great. Amen. That he said that whatever you have to deal with before you deal with it, I made a way of escape. Amen. He's the great architect. Amen. The architect that designed this building, when he designed this building, for every interest, he made an exit. He said, I won't let you get in here and can't get out. And Jesus said, with every test, with every trial, with every tribulation, even if it's your fault, I won't let you get in and you can't get out. Somebody say, I got a way out. I'm tired, but I got a way out. I'm weary, but I got a way out. I can't see it, but I got a way out. Shout, I'm coming out of this. I said, shout, I'm coming out of this. The devil should have killed me when he had a chance because I'm coming out of this. I refuse to die in this situation. Clap your hands and say, the power of Pentecost. The text, my brothers and sisters, says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. In other words, what was going to happen could not happen on the 49th day. And it could not happen on the 51st day. It was so significant that God designed it to happen on a significant day. Amen. The day of Pentecost. Amen. It had to fully come. It had to completely come. Like your miracle. Like your deliverance. Like your healing. Amen. It's got to fully come. Amen. It's already happened in the supernatural. Now it has to manifest in the natural. That's why we say death and life is in the power of your tongue. You got to talk something sweet because you might have to eat it. Amen. You are not trying to get healed, but with his stripes, you are healed. Are you listening to me? If you're saying God's going to heal me, you're not operating in faith because faith is not was, faith is not will be, but faith is always now. The Bible says now faith 
is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things, amen, not seen. And in the original writing, amen, it says, having yet not seen, meaning that it already exists, Sister Kim. It's just not in the natural. It's in the supernatural. Amen? And we got to speak it into our realm. Amen? It says, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. We know that the 12 were there. And we know that the 70 that he sent out was there. And we suppose by scholarship that the others were the women who helped Jesus in ministry. Amen? So we might not be able to name every individual, but we can number it to be 120. Amen? 120 of them were there. Amen? They were in one place, and they were on one accord. One place on one accord. If we want God to move, Grace family, we got to come on one accord. Amen? You can't do what you want to do, and I can't do what I want to do, but we all must do what the Lord has ordained Grace family to do. Amen? Amen? It's one accord, united, the power of unity. Amen? They went on one accord. Anything can happen when we come together. Amen? Anything can happen when we come together. And so they were in this one place, amen, and they were on one accord. Now, one accord, I had to ask myself. Uh, accord comes from a musical term, accordion. That instrument, you know what I mean? It's, it means harmony. The question is, they were all in one place on one accord. We know what happened at the cross. Amen? We, we know that the disciples except John ran. We know they were afraid. We know they were hiding. We know the mother was there. We know Mary Magdalene was there. Amen. We know the sister of Mary. We know the women were there. Amen. And so when it talks about them being in one place on one accord, what was that? Because they were afraid. Are you listening to me? And because Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait, do you mean that they stopped being afraid? Or were they in comfort in that room because nobody could find them? And could it be the one accord that they were on was, I can't believe Judas betrayed him. But Judas wasn't there to retaliate. Could they have been talking about, I can't believe Thomas doubted him. I can't believe Peter denied him not once, not twice, but three times. Could it, could it be that they were in harmony, but the harmony they were in was not, amen, waiting for the promise? Has God ever showed up, amen, when you were messed up? Amen? Sometimes we expect God only to show up in perfect condition. But I've walked with God long enough to tell you that when I least expect it, when I don't deserve it, here he comes. Are you listening to me? Have you ever been there when you felt like it was all falling apart and I don't know what to do? Then God just shows up and the ruach, the breath of God, comes on your situation and turns it around? Somebody say, thank God. I don't know what harmony or chord they were on, but they were all on one accord. Amen? And then it says, and suddenly... Amen? In other words, they were waiting for something, amen, and they were still surprised. Amen? They were waiting, and suddenly, and suddenly, it happened so fast. Amen? It caught them by surprise. Amen? And suddenly, there was a sound from heaven. I like that. It was not just a sound, but it was a sound from heaven. Amen? I can't even tell you what that sound was, but it sounded like a rushing mighty wind. It didn't say it was a rushing mighty wind, Coley, but it sounded like a rushing mighty wind. Amen. I don't know exactly what it was, but if I had to identify to something that you can understand what I heard and what I felt, it sounded as it was a rushing mighty wind. 
it was like a hurricane. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Where stuff started moving around. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Things were getting out of place. Amen. Yeah. Desks inside the room were moving around. Chairs inside the room were moving around. Drapes at the window were moving around. It was a sign of something getting ready to happen. Things in your life are about to move around. Things in your life are about to move around. Things in your life are about to move around. There's some things in you I gotta get out of you. There's some things in you that you don't need. There's some things in you that only I can control. It's about to move around. Put your hands together and say, yes, Lord. Uh, yeah. Woo. It, it was as of a rushing mighty wind amen it filled the whole house listen now it filled the whole house normally when we identify with rushing mighty wind with hurricane wind with tornado wind we're on the inside and it's on the outside they are on the inside and have no idea what's about to happen. Amen? And all this sound and power and wind is taking place, and they have no idea what is going to happen. Are you listening to me? And while they are looking, trying to figure out, amen, why the windows are closed but it's wind blowing, why the doors are closed but it's wind blowing, listen to this now, where their clothes are still on their body but wind is blowing as they're looking around trying to figure out what is going on. They can't explain it, but what they can do is look at each other like, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? And all of a sudden, with the unexpectation, amen, of the promise of the Father about to happen to them, there appeared. Lord have mercy. There appeared, yeah, upon each of them a divided tongue as of fire. Amen. There appeared upon each of them a divided tongue as of fire. I'm here and I can't explain what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if to be afraid or excited. But while I'm here in the unknown, all of a sudden, there appears a divided tongue upon each of them, upon each of them, upon each of them. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Leave, my fire leave my fire alone. You got yours. It appeared upon each of them. In other words, I got what you got. I, I, don't, I don't need you to help me get, amen. I got what you got, amen. The same God that saved you saved me. The same God that lives in you lives in me. The same God that's working with me is working with you. I don't have it all together, and you don't have it all together. But what I do know is God is not finished with me yet, amen. He got fire, amen, to work with me. Can I get a witness? There appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire, and it set upon each of them. Amen? And they all got the same thing. And they were all filled. Just Peter. Just Mary. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And, 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 and when they got filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, they didn't sit down and say, I don't have nothing to do. But the Bible says that they came out of that upper room and they walked outside talking in languages that they didn't know but others knew. And Peter the Revelator start talking about Jesus, Mary's baby, the Lamb of God that came to take away the sins of the world. He start talking and while he was talking, the others were wobbling and, and, and mummering and saying something and they said these men are drunk and Peter said wait a minute we're not drunk as you suppose I am drunk but not off of what you get drunk off I'm high but not on what you get high off I got something on the inside working on the outside and 3,000 people got saved and added to the church the power of Pentecost. I'm getting out of here now. 
Say the power of Pentecost. When you hear Pentecost, according to your denomination, many pictures come to your mind. I'm not going to highlight them. You've already painted a picture on the canvas of your imagination. But what I want you to know is about the power of Pentecost. Because some denominations only focus on they spoke in tongues. But the power of Pentecost is much more than that. Are you listening to me? The symbol of the Holy Ghost is fire. Are you listening to me? And fire plays a role. Fire purges and it purifies. Are you listening to me? It purges and it purifies. Amen? There's something about fire. Amen? It purges and it purifies. Amen? So the Holy Spirit came upon each of them because all of them needed purging and all of them needed purifying. You are filled with the Holy Ghost because you need to be purged and you need to be purified. I need to be purged. I need to be purified. My mama need to be purged. My mama need to be purified. First lady needs to be purged. First lady needs to be purified. The deacons need to be purged. The deacons need to be purified. Without any purging, without any purification, there would be no preacher here today. There would be no deacons here today. There would be no singers here today. But God, who is rich in mercy, look beyond our fault and saw our need to purge us uh, and purify us. Uh, not one time, uh, but long as I live, uh, the God that I serve uh, is looking beyond my fault uh, and seeing my need. Uh, and what is my need? Uh, I need uh, to be purged uh, and I need uh, to be purified. Uh, what can wash uh, away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I know you say he died over 2,000 years ago, but can I say to you straight today, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the blood still works. Yeah, it reaches from the highest mountain uh, to the lowest valley. Uh, you can have a PhD, uh, but you need the blood. Uh, you can be king of the street, uh, but you need the blood. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, yeah, but I'm so glad uh, that the blood still works uh, because if salvation uh, was based on uh, economics, uh, I wouldn't have it. Uh, if it was based on looks, uh, I wouldn't have it. If it was based on education, I wouldn't have it. But it's based on a broken and contrite spirit. I know I need God. I know I need God. I can't do it alone. I can't do it by myself. I can't be in control. I need the Lord. Put your hands together and shout the power of Pentecost. I got to let you go now. I got to let you go now. You going to help me close? The power of Pentecost. Number one, that power is more for speaking in tongues. It comes to eliminate your fear. These disciples who became apostles of the church were afraid that somebody was going to kill them. They were in the room and they were waiting for the promise of the Father. And I can imagine just like today when a meeting is called, somebody is late. It burns me up, but somebody is always late. What's my saying? If you're on time, and if you're late, uh, and if you're on time, you're late. You Got to be there early. Got to get there early to be on time. Somebody knocks at the door. And in their fear, nobody wants to answer the door. I don't know who's at the door. Could it be the Roman soldiers? 
who hung up Jesus on that cross and nailed him and watched him die. I don't know about you, but I don't want to die. Nobody wanted to answer the door because they were afraid. They waited in that room because they were afraid. But when the power of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fills you up, it eliminates fear. Fear. Fear is a opposite of faith. And without faith, we cannot please God. Eliminate fear. Not only will it eliminate fear, it will empower your faith. It will empower your faith. The power of Pentecost, amen, It's not just about speaking in unknown tongues, amen. It's about your fear being eliminated, amen. It is about the empowering of your faith, amen. The empowering of your faith, amen. Your faith can grow. Your faith can grow, amen. Your faith can grow. Amen? You do not have to hang around with the size of a mustard seed, even though you can do much with it. Amen? But faith only grows by hearing the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Our faith doesn't grow because we operate on what we heard, not what we're hearing. See, our God is a right now God. And he's always speaking. The question is, are we listening? It's like a radio band. It has FM and AM. Amen? Frequency mode and aptitude mode. Amen? If God is on FM, are you listening to me? And you on AM, you'll never hear what God's saying. Just like when you're in your car and it's on FM, you will not pick up anything on AM. And vice versa. Amen? But if you can ever get in tune with the power of the Holy Ghost... If you could ever get in tune with the oneness of God, if you could ever get in tune with what God is doing now, if you could ever get in tune with what God is saying now, it will empower your faith, amen? And some things that you could not have, all of a sudden, they become yours, amen? The power of the Holy Spirit comes to do what? Eliminate that fear. Empower your faith. Amen? And then for us to expect our fire. We've got to expect our fire. We cannot ever think we made it because God's been good to us. Amen? We can't ever think we made it. we got to expect our fire. Amen? We've got to expect to be purged and purified. Amen? Because what God is looking for in us, we are not there. Our faith is as precious as gold. A goldsmith takes gold and he sticks it in the fire. And when he puts gold in the fire, the impurities rise to the top. He pulls the coal out of the fire and scrapes off the impurities. Then pop right, he sticks it back in. Are you listening to me? And impurities rise up, and he takes it out, and he scrapes them off. And that process is continued yes. until when? Until the goldsmith looks at the gold, and he can see himself. Yes. And God does the same thing with us. Stop saying the devil is on me. Stop saying the devil is bothering me. Stop saying the devil is doing this, and the devil is doing that. He's not able to have control over your life. Jesus is in control of your life. Amen? And you have to accept your fire, amen, because it's God putting you in, and it's God pulling you out. I said, it's God putting you in, and it's God pulling you out, and it's God putting you in, and it's God pulling you out, and when you start singing that song, how long am I going to go through this? How long am I going to go through that? I got the answer. Until God sees him in you, until we look like the Lord, we're going to have tests we're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulations. Uh, but the one thing that's for sure, we're coming out. Uh, and when we come out, uh, we're going to look better. When we come out, we're going to be better. Uh, shout, I'm bigger and I'm better. Uh, think about how God.
has brought you out. Uh, think about how God uh, has turned it around. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, uh, where would I be? Uh, isn't he able? Uh, I'm closing now. Uh, weeping uh, may endure for the night, uh, but touch your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, joy uh, comes in the morning. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, the morning uh, is not a clock, uh, it's a season. And I don't know about you, uh, but I told the devil uh, it's morning time. I'm ready, I'm able, I receive my deliverance. I've cried my last tear, I've shed my last moment. I'm done with thinking that I can't make it. It's morning time. I'm on my way. I decree and declare the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and my enemies, I know you don't have none, but Lord have mercy. I sure enough got enemies. When they came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. That's the God that I serve. If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battle, the victory is mine. I don't know about you, but today I have the power of Pentecost. Power! Yeah! To walk right. Power! To talk right. Power to live right. Power to love right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive them who use you and abuse you. That's the Christian way. I know you need help with this, and so do I. But turn the other cheek when you can. That's what the Bible says. You got to turn another cheek, but sometimes I got something called reflexes. I might hit you back. Don't you try me. I might hit you back. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Is he all right? Has he ever made a way? He opens doors that no man can close and closes doors that no man can open. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad. I'm glad, yeah, I'm so glad he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I couldn't pick myself up. When I was up, I couldn't turn myself around. But Jesus, 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 he did it again. And I'm so glad that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly uh, above all that I ask or think uh, according uh, to the power uh, that's in me uh, touch yourself uh, and shout uh, I have uh, the power I have the power I have the power my time is up and I thank you for yours the power of Pentecost.